computer religion. In the beginning there was analog chaos. Then came the great divide, the one and the zero, the black and the white, the positive and the negative, the yin and the yang. And thus came into being the original sun. The original sun lay dormant, waiting for its genesis and realization through the gene matriculations of matter in the primordial seas of planet Earth. The basic binary code was already at work in the simple intelligence of bacteria in the form of the categorical imperative advance or retreat, eat or be eaten, the original computation, live or die, to be or not to be. Aeons passed, computations multiplied into the billions and trillions and from this essence human intelligence arose. In the fields of Mesopotamia, the beginnings of agriculture began to stir with the then novel idea that plants will grow when near water. Ergo, if water is transported to the plant, the plant will grow. The first canals were dug and water was allowed to flow. The original circuit board. Too much water or too little water and the plants will perish. Data loss. So the sluice or gate came into being. The presence of a current or a lack of it is the blueprint for the valve and ultimately the transistor and the microchip. Thus we find that even in the mighty Cray supercomputer has its essential quiddity in the quagmires of ancient Babylon. So much for the historical validity of our computer religion functions of water and earth and the composition of man mirrored in artifact the computer all the requisites of a true religion one of the parameters of how we define a religion is the amount of time we are prepared to sacrifice in the service of said religion scholars used to spend hours in debate on such things as how many angels can stand on the head of a pin who did Cain marry? Today we pontificate on the esoteric inner workings of the computer. How big is the processor? Do we have a conflict situation to resolve in the registry? Which is best, the AMD chip or the Pentium? In the Middle Ages, the whole of society was geared up to the service of the Christian religion. The artists painted pictures from the Bible, masons and architects built churches and cathedrals to the honour of God. We can see now, in our time, how the whole of society has come to rely on the computer, and many people depend on the various offshoots of the perpetuating computer industry for their livelihood. Once again the computer-aided architects are designing monumental buildings for the great information companies. Their walls besplattered with computer-aided art and computer-designed ergonomic chairs to soothe the ruined posture of millions of drones voluntarily chained before their screens. The computer, a wonderful machine to save us time, but how much time do we have to spend before our electron shrine in the corner? Have you ever experienced the strange phenomenon of computer time? One turns on the computer at 10 o'clock in the evening and the next time you look at the clock, it's 3 in the morning. Where does that time go? All religions require a certain amount of mystery. The transformation of the wine and bread into blood and flesh, secret rituals and unfathomable languages. Priests and acolytes, arcane symbols and icons. Anybody who has worked with a computer knows that mysteries abound. The messages from nowhere with no apparent meaning. Esoteric names and codes, blue screen, black screen and the unprovoked system crash. Phenomena that leave even the au fait helpless and lost. Yea, verily, even the high priest of programming, Saint Bill Gates, has been known to gnash his teeth and lose his data. What of the layman? Behold, standing before him, a white humming box, a tabernacle, a Torah, 
a Pandora's box of tricks, a musical instrument, a printing press, a post office, an artist's atelier, a workplace, a calculating machine, a library, a photo studio, a weapon defense system, a video edit suite, a potential connection to every human being on the planet, a religion without belief, a hands-on religion, a what you see is what you get religion. The church used to be the wealthiest body in the world. Perhaps in this sense, money can be used to gauge the authenticity of a religion. And who's the richest man in the world today? 